it's getting dark. You and Timmy better be heading home. Dad, what are you worried about? Welcome back to Churchill Downs on the eve of the Kentucky Derby, and with me is Jack Whitaker of ABC Sports, and you just said this is Kentucky Derby number 15 for you. Uh, which one is the most memorable for you? Well, Greg, I think the first one's always your most memorable, and my first one certainly was. It was 1965 when Lucky Debonair won with Bill Shoemaker. What made it memorable were several things. First of all, there was a fire broke out right here, and the wind was blowing the way it's blowing now, thankfully, away or we'd have had a bigger news story and we had a sporting event. But that held up the start of the race by an hour. So we had to fill that hour and we're using all the material that we we're keeping for the end of the race. <laughs> we got through it all right, had a great interview with, uh, with uh, Shoemaker, and we went back to the trucks when it was all over and everybody had a long face because there had been a second fire in a sewer in Baltimore and cut out all our audio lines. So <laughs> nobody heard a word we said uh, from the moment the race began until the end. So I knew right away horse racing was a little different. <laughs> Has it been your ex uh, experience that when you prepare for the race, you, you have more fun concentrating on the favorites or the long shot? Well, it's, uh, you, you, I could think it's a combination. Long shot sometimes, you know, it's wherever the story is. Wherever the owners are fun, wherever the, the trainer is fun, wherever there's a... That's what appeals to all of us, I think. And you, you have to take in, into consideration all of them because you never know what's going to happen. And what's your feeling the story is this year at the Derby? Well, I think the story this year, unfortunately, is dosage. That's why I'm hoping Snow Chief wins. <laughs> <laughs> the dosage is a pretty complex yeah. situation and something that uh, we can't get into right now. But uh, are you one for predictions? Would you get into that before uh, the Derby? Well, again, I think the little guy has done everything asked for him. He's won on the West Coast. He's won here in Florida in, in, in all kinds of different tracks. He can win on the lead he can come up from off the pace uh he looks good uh and uh so i'll go with him i think there are three two or three or four others that, that could win and won't be surprised if, if, if the longest shot in the field wins the black bullet as he's <laughs> called yeah. jack whittaker thank you very much for joining us we appreciate it you're quite well sharon who do you pick for uh, the 1986 derby well greg i think it would be foolish to pick anybody other than snow chief and badger mm -hmm. land but you know you don't bet on somebody who's a favorite so if you're checking a long shot I would pick Magambo mainly on his good looks, which is the worst way in the world to pick a winner of a race. He's a magnificent looking horse and can be brilliant. Interestingly, Jack mentioned dosage. He doesn't qualify there either. It's an analysis of their pedigrees to see who can go a mile and a quarter the uh, first Saturday in May as a three-year-old. That, in a nutshell, is it. Magambo allegedly doesn't qualify, but boy, he sure is the best looking horse in the race. And of course, there is a Wheatley Hall, who is thought by many, yourself included, to be a good looking horse, and, and perhaps could uh, be a surprise if there is to be a surprise in the 1986 Kentucky Derby. The weather will be very good between 65 and 70 degrees and a sunny day. We hope you enjoy the 86 Kentucky Derby. For Sharon Smith, I'm Greg Gumbel.